Okay, let's talk about the mole for a little bit. You know that for some time I've been singing about the mole and carrying a little mole around in my pocket or on my chin. But what is this thing called a mole, anyhow? Well, that's what we will be studying in this unit. And we're going to take a moment here to think about the mole in these terms. Why do we need to count atoms? Because when we say a mole, we're really talking about a number of things. Just like when we say a dozen eggs or a dozen donuts, you know that we're talking about a number of eggs or a number of donuts. Well, why do we need to count atoms? Because they're pretty small things anyhow. Well, to try to touch on this idea of why we count atoms, why it's important for us to count atoms, let's consider this little device right in here that's behind the steering wheel or dash um, of your car, an airbag, that when you are in some kind of an accident, a ball bearing swings and a spring is depressed, an electrical signal goes, and there's an actual explosion in here that blows up this airbag with nitrogen gas. Now, here's a series of reactions that have to occur. This is the sodium azide that's the explosive material in your airbag. And here's the nitrogen that it produces to blow that airbag up, but you'll notice there's something else produced. This is sodium. Now, sodium dust that would be produced, if you inhale that into your lungs, it's going to be very irritating, maybe even dangerous. And so we don't want to have that just floating around in the air to get in our lungs or in our eyes. So there's another reaction that occurs, and that sodium reacts with this potassium nitrate that's uh, kind of packed around here in this filter material. It um, reacts with that and produces these two chemicals. But these two chemicals still are not all that wonderful to have floating in the air. And so a third reaction occurs. And this third reaction reacts those chemicals we didn't like very well with silicon dioxide and makes uh, a type of glass dust. These are just little particles of glass. They're not going to be any, anything that's going to cut you or anything like that. Just dust, fine dust. And that's not nearly as dangerous as the other chemicals. So if you're not going to have any atoms of sodium right here left over, you have to know, you have to have a way to calculate how many sodium atoms you're going to make so that you know how many of these molecules you need to react with the sodium to make this and how much of this SiO2 to put in to make sure it's all going to react and turn into dust. So that's why we need to count atoms is many times in chemical reactions we encounter situations just like this one where we need to know fairly closely how many atoms we are dealing with and that's the purpose of a mole. Now a mole is represented by this um, a mole represents I should say a number of atoms in a sample. Now, it turns out that the number of atoms is equivalent to the atomic mass. Now, we'll get into that in a little bit later. But this number that we talk about when we say a mole, the number of things, is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And usually, we just write that as um, three sig figs. Oops, let's get three sig figs. 6.02 times 10 to the 23. That's the number of things in a mole. And for this unit, we're just going to be talking about atoms, but of course we could um, talk about any material, any item, and say we have a mole of those things, and it would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. But in this unit, what we are going to be doing is using this concept of a mole to convert between grams of an element, atoms of an element, and moles of an element. In other words, 
we'll find that the mole can be used to make conversions in two different ways. We can convert from moles to the mass of a chemical, any chemical. And we can convert from moles to the number of particles. Uh, in this unit, we'll be just talking, focusing on atoms and being able to convert from moles to number of atoms or from moles to the mass of those atoms. But that also, of course, will allow us to make conversions all the way back and forth from number of atoms clear up here to how much mass would that number of atoms be? So this is the convert one of the conversion factors we'll use that one mole of anything is this number, this many things. So let's keep that conversion factor in mind. You can pause this and write it down if you need to, if you don't already have it written down somewhere. So here's an example problem we're going to use. Um, how many moles of carbon are in this many atoms of carbon? So the thing we know here is the number of atoms, 1.29 times 10 to the 5, oops, 10 to the 15 atoms of carbon. And of course, the unknown, the thing we want to find here at the end of our problem is how many moles of carbon is this? And then eventually we would be able to turn this into grams and tell you how many grams of carbon there were with this many atoms. But for this problem, this is what we're going to do. So let's just start here. 1, 2, 9 times 10 to the 15 atoms of carbon. And let's put our conversion factor here. Of course, the first thing we want to look at is our units. And we want this unit to cancel. There's my pointer. We want this unit to cancel. So we're going to put it down here. Atoms of carbon. And that will allow those to factor out. And up here, we're going to put mole because that's the unit we want. And we know that the number that goes here is one mole. And what is the number of atoms in one mole? Well, this is our Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So all we have to do is pull out our calculator here. Somewhere I think I have a calculator. There it is. Pull out our calculator here. Where can I get that so I can see? Okay. Pull out our calculator here. I'm going to put 1.29 exponent right here. Exponent. Ah, I missed here. Missed the number. Clear entry. 1.29 exponent 15 times oh I don't want to multiply I want to divide so I'm just going to multiply by 1 and then let me divide by 6.02 exponent 23 so now I'm going to divide. Of course, I have this number here. And I'm going to divide by a much larger number. So I'm going to get some number less than 1. So we aren't going to be surprised here to see a negative exponent. So our answer here to 3 sig figs um, is going to be 2.14 times 10 to the negative 9. 2.14 times 10 to the negative 9. And the unit that's left is moles. And actually, I didn't write it there. That's moles of carbon. And um, that's how we solve that kind of problem. Now, we can make the opposite kind of calculation by saying how many atoms of carbon are in um, 
this is a this is a typo this should have been moles how many atoms of carbon are in 6.010 uh, moles of carbon in other words this right here is the thing we know 0 0.610 moles of carbon and the unknown is how many atoms of that how many atoms of carbon is in that many moles so we're just going to start with our point let's see if we can do that a little neater point six one zero moles of carbon and we're going to put on our conversion factor uh, remember uh, we want moles to factor out so if it's upstairs here we're going to put it downstairs here so that it factors out so moles of carbon is going to go on the bottom and the thing we want to le be left with here is atoms of carbon so our conversion factor what's the relationship between number of atoms and number of moles well we know that one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. And so in this particular problem, let's see if I can find my calculator. Oh, didn't quite get it here. There we go. There's the calculator. I'm going to move it up here this time um, and see if I can get it to work for me. Point six one zero. See if I can push the right button this time. Times 6.02. And I'm looking for this exponent key right here. Um, did I push it? Exponent. There we go. Um, 23. So that's, even though it doesn't look like it, that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And we're going to push equals. And we're going to get this rather large number that unfortunately this calculator did not put in scientific notation so that's going to be to three significant digits that's going to be three six seven oops, three point six seven times ten to uh, i'm relatively sure that that's going to be to the 23rd, although I don't have an easy way to check that. I am going to let you check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It appears to be the 23rd, and in fact, it should be because 0.6 is just a little bit more than one half of this. There's the one half of 6.02. And so this exponent, if we just add the exponents here, it's going to come up to 23. It 